Growing up poor in the West has its own unique minor tragedies. One I'm sure many of you will have felt is that small sadness of getting the thing that's almost what you asked for. The GoBot instead of the Transformer. The straight-to-video sequel instead of the original. The official merchandise that isn't quite kosher. Think of the GTX 1060 3GB version as that sadness, but in graphics card form. There was quite the kerfuffle caused by the release of the gimped version of the GTX 1060 back in 2016. Previously, it had been considered good practice for gamers on a budget to save themselves some cash on a graphics card by skimping a little on the frame buffer. After all, 3GB was still almost as much as the phenomenally popular GTX 970. Alas, it would turn out that, this time, Nvidia hadn't just reduced the VRAM amount, but also the number of GPU cores on the die. This meant that choosing the cheaper card would still result in lower overall performance, even when not limited by the size of the frame buffer. In 2021, not only is this lower performance going to count against the card in more demanding titles, but the limited VRAM is going to necessitate choosing some more conservative quality settings. In this video, I'm loading it up into my RPG PC, itself intended to represent the average gaming PC, to see if the kerfuffle is still justified. I do hate continually dragging the now discontinued AMD GCN cards into unrelated videos. Okay, that's not true, I'd, I'll always have a soft spot for them and I don't care who knows it, but the 1063GB at 1080 low, which incidentally is as high as I could go without breaking the VRAM limit, manages 74fps on average in Doom Eternal, which places it between the ancient R9 280 and still decidedly pre-modern R9 380. There's an uncharacteristically huge drop-off in performance from the 3GB in Assassin's Creed Valhalla when compared to the 6GB. The cheaper card loses a massive 10fps at 1080 high, averaging 37fps down from 47. Dropping to medium essentially completely overcomes this difference. Forza Horizon 4 runs like a dream on most hardware, but especially on Pascal, and I can only hope the same holds true for Horizon 5 later this year. For the time being, the 1063GB comes so very close to 100fps at 1080 high settings, and only a couple of frames per second behind the more expensive version. Apex Legends ran very well on the GTX 1066GB, and the picture's pretty much the same here on the 3GB model. I dropped overall settings to low and textures to medium, as opposed to medium and high on the higher end card, and scored about the same average of 100fps and slightly higher 1% lows. Neither the 3 nor 6GB versions of the 1060 are going to push 240fps in Fortnite at competitive settings, so unless you have a beastly processor and a happy using performance mode, you can probably get those thoughts out of your head right now. Still, 176fps is pretty awesome on a 144Hz monitor, and the more aesthetically inclined can get averages close to 80fps with high settings. Even at 1080 low, the 3GB 1060 pushes past the warning line on Warzone's memory usage indicator, and textures once more are failing to load properly. The fact that the GPU isn't worrying itself with petty distractions like, I don't know, loading in assets, is the most likely explanation for the score of 78 FPS, actually a few frames faster than the 6GB version. The 3GB 1060 does not handle Cyberpunk well. 1080 medium reaches 38 FPS, and low comes in at a 45 FPS average, each one in the region of 10 FPS slower than the 6GB. Before recording this footage, the game had received a patch that improved performance, but sadly I wasn't able to do a before and after test to see if it made a difference. Suffice to say, this is as good as the 3GB 1060 gets without dropping resolution. 
The idea that 60 FPS is the ideal playable frame rate for games is a pretty America centric worldview, and I'm sad to say it's one I've done nothing to dissuade people of so far. In the UK, PAL refresh rates were traditionally 25 and 50 Hz, so I'm going to go ahead and say that the 50 FPS average in Horizon Zero Dawn at 1080 balanced is exceptionally playable, with no caveats whatsoever. Valheim 2 smashes through the classic 50 FPS barrier at 1080 high, with fancy settings turned off. By comparison, the 6GB scored about the same, though that card was reviewed in April and, as I always have to point out with Valheim, they haven't finished making it yet, and so optimizations are going on all the time. Watch Dogs Legion wants more than 3GB of VRAM at 1080 regardless of quality settings. I ran the benchmark at low, medium and high settings, scoring averages of 57, 54 and 44 FPS, and lows of 43, 41 and 34 respectively. Although low and medium are perfectly playable, perhaps you might want to try experimenting with the resolution scaler, as at full 1080, none of them are going to guarantee frame rates stay above that magic 50. Likewise, Resident Evil Village isn't going to be satisfied with the 3GB buffer here. I feel like the GPU could drive some exceptionally high settings otherwise, at 1080 balanced FPS reaches into the 90s on average, but from time to time the game will protest and drop into the 30s for no obvious reason. The only solution, sadly, is to drop resolution, either directly or using one of the game's scalers, until the VRAM limit is satisfied. If you bought a 3GB 1060 in the past and want to see how well it can perform today, the answer is surprisingly well overall, though that state of affairs might not last. As more and more VRAM hungry games come out, you'll likely be forced to play with reduced settings to avoid Warzone like ugliness or Resident Evil esque slowdowns. The good news is most games will run like a dream on this card at 900 or 720 with low settings, in some cases as fast as your CPU will allow, but, well, they won't look too pretty. Should you buy one in 2021? Well, I know beggars can't be choosers in the scalper pandemic, but if you have the option to look at a 4GB Polaris or an entry-level Turing card for similar prices, they'd definitely be the options I'd recommend over this one. Hope this has been useful, entertaining, or at least didn't make you want to switch off. Kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.